question uh, from my side uh, because now we uh, have finished the first three classes already and uh, now everybody should know how the system is running. And uh, to be honest, from my experience, uh, it's really, really important for everyone to unmute his computer or his mobile device, because if not, uh, there is too much noise in the background and sometimes this makes it a little bit difficult uh, to speak and to concentrate. Second is, uh, like Mr. Mohinda said before, uh, we want to but another point in this uh, moment is please put only questions regarding to the topic of the lesson of that day because we cannot answer every question from every topic around handball and on the other side all together we have 25 lessons and these 25 sessions 25 webinars we have now in the next days to up till i think it's 25th of may uh, there will be enough changes of the topics so that almost every topic in handball is covered not everyone but very many of them so we are coming to defense we are coming to attack we are coming to fast break and as you will see from all those topics when they follow there is a logical structure there is a red line in this so some elements will appear again and again and again this is why for instance i started in the first session with these 10 instructions of handball uh, including such sentences like attack teaches defense or defense structures attack or the four basic principles in defense the four basic principles in attack because you will see that in different types of topics we will always come back to those basics basic elements uh, so what we try to create is a picture a big picture uh, like a big carpet with different uh, elements and we put and more uh, this is what i'm asking for and i think uh, i think uh, everyone should be uh, should be a little bit patient yes uh, and wait for the picture to become clear okay today's topic is the basics of speed and agility another presentation with something first of all very important for handball but on the other side something with uh, uh, which gives a general basis to the players uh, so in the first moment you will see it's about motor skills it's about running fast and so on and so on things that are important for handball players but for other athletes too in the first chapter uh, we will talk about the basic knowledge uh, the coach should have in that moment in the second chapter there will be a lot of uh, videos about general speed and agility and in the third chapter i will give a very short overview or a short introduction into the idea of specific agility in handball but as you know from our schedule this is a single topic we will have at the end or close to the end of our 25 sessions so this will be only a short introduction 
to give you the idea uh, because uh, then uh, you will see how we will continue. So please remember this or use this as a, the first appetizer, you might say, uh, for this topic will, which will be worked out uh, more in detail later on. Okay, now about the basic knowledge. Uh, this is the first chapter and we start with some slides we had yesterday before, but I will uh, discuss that in, uh, in a short way only. First slide, you remember the, the sentence and how it is continued. Athletics are not everything in handball, but without athletics, everything is nothing. Uh, so the players need to work out their athletic skills in coordination, like we said yesterday, and in speed and agility too. Uh, this is very much important. Uh, we have on the other side the techniques So you have maybe a small hammer, a big hammer, huh? and the size of the tool you can use depends on the athletic skills you have. So the more your athletics are, or the athletic basics of the players are worked out, the more they can differentiate in which way they can use the tools, in which way they can use the techniques. So that's why we need those athletic basics. On the other side, please always remember, handball is not track and field. Track and field is maximum speed. Handball is sometimes only optimum speed. So regarding two situations related to opponent's movement, always the players have to adapt to the game situations. Uh, so it's nice if they can run really very, very fast. But on the other hand, uh, to work that out on a very, very high level uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of input in training, which is taken away from technical preparation or tactical preparation of the team. So to optimize is the task of the coach for every single player. Especially when you keep in mind that you have in your team normally different types of players. Some are maybe not so high, but very agile from their basic preconditions. Some are more tall, but in general, they are slower. Huh? So from this more tall but slower player, you can never expect huh, that he will be as fast as the quick one. Uh, so he will never reach that level. How many trainings you will spend, uh, uh, no question, he will not get on that level. So you must try to optimize the level of agility for this player and for the other player. Even at the end, different speed is the result. Okay, the higher level of the speed in the game, the higher demands because of active and flexible defense, and the new techniques in attack, they require the uh, development of speed and agility. These are some points which are really, really important uh, for our game, because if you want to have an attractive game, you have to play it fast. If you want to have an attractive game, you have to play it with an active and flexible defense. We will see that in the next days when we change to defense. Uh, this will be our topic for some sessions now in the next uh, webinars. And especially the techniques in attack, especially shooting from the backcourt position, depends not only on the technique how it uh, um, in, in general, but uh, it depends on use the technique very fast. So you can see now uh, players shooting very quick, not with a long arm, but from a shorter arm, which gives them uh, a quicker realization of the technique and gives them the chance to shoot before the block is there. Uh, uh, so the gap in the defense is open. And this depends again on speed and agility in that special movement, on that special technique. 
Yeah? So all those three points are really uh, important for the development of our players. And to come back once again to our uh, 10 instructions, the first instruction again, handball is played with legs and head. And in both parts, you have to be fast. Fast in running and fast in decision making. Huh? This is the idea of that specific uh, concept of agility in handball, which we'll introduce in chapter number three in this presentation. And on the other side, you remember the seventh instruction, which goes in the, the process even uh, deeper. Because we say, if you can play with a high speed, you can slow down in the game. But if you always play slow, uh, you cannot expect that you play successfully when you have to play fast. So that's why from the beginning, in most of our training sessions and in all competitions, basically and in general, we should enforce the players try to play fast. have adapted to that if they have the preconditions for that they can use it but they are not in for they would or play in a slow way, huh? move from defense to attack slow, circulate the ball slow, move not in fast break situations, and so on and so on. And then maybe three or four minutes to the end of the game, uh, the, your team is behind with three goals and you are shouting outside now. Under this work to translate, so they adapt to that needs. Okay. If we speak about agility in general. Uh, as possible and to carry at high speed. This is something quite important, uh, this low resistance. Uh, so for instance, you know from track and field that the players have to run 100 meter, 200 meter sprint, uh, but there is no resistance, there is no load on them. Uh, because the more load is given, let's say pressure from an opponent, then more power is needed and the speed is going down. Uh, if you want to, or if the players should create the highest speed, then there should be almost no resistance from opponent. Uh, sometimes we use this idea in training and give a little bit resistance. For instance, when we make them running up a hill, uh, so they're using their own body, uh, the weight, uh, but they have not to accelerate it in the normal way, but a little bit up. Uh, and this gives them a little bit more resistance. Uh, but keep the resistance as small as possible uh, to create really maximum speed in that moment. Second is... Uh, is possible in a movement any part of the body for 10 seconds 
because this depends on the energy in our muscles. Uh, this is limited to 10 seconds maximum. Uh, so, and this energy is immediately there. Uh, so the, uh, on the other side, you see in the beginning of that sentence, it depends on coordination. So there is a close reaction, uh, a relation, sorry, a close Remember yesterday's practical um, examples and the theoretical advices. You remember that there was an idea of coordination under time pressure. So create movements as fast as possible under time pressure, create a high frequency in the movements. And this is the way uh, speed and coordination or agility and coordination are coming together in that moment. Okay. So there's one thing that you need to know before uh, that the agility is first of all reached because of the contraction of the and the movement speed of the nerve muscle system so this is a process inside your body on one side on the other side the reaction speed is something that deals with the ability to react to signals so we have two parts in agility the first is how it is worked out, action agility. And the second is when to start uh, the movement. This is reaction agility or reaction speed. And this is what we have in different types of sports, something or sometimes a little bit different. So for instance, for a track and field, there's only one reaction or one signal the, the athletes have to react to. It's the starting gun. Uh, and then they have to go. This is the signal and only one reaction needed. Handball, as you imagine from our uh, uh, very complex game, has so many different signals, huh? like movements of the teammates, movement of the uh, opponents, uh, referee uh, decisions. Huh? So on different uh, um, uh, um, signals, the players have to react differently. Huh? So it's not only the same movement because of a signal, but different signals for different reactions. And that makes it much more demanding for the players. Okay, so this is why we have this essential uh, aspect of agility. Huh? and this uh, typical uh, way of reaction uh, that is not only depending on, first of all, uh, action agility, but it's on reaction agility or reaction speed, and very often has this to do with anticipation. Uh. So in that moment, the players, they need to read and they need to observe the situation and from their experience, they can anticipate what will happen in the next moment. Uh, and this helps them to make a decision according to that situation earlier with a more or less higher probability of success. Uh, not every time the players make the right decision. Sometimes they fail. And especially for young players without a um, lot of um, experience, anticipation is a problem or is not possible because of a lack of experience. Huh? But the more experienced the players are, the easier they can anticipate what will happen. So, if we come to the training situation, first of all, it's very important for speed and agility to warm up the body before and the body temperature should be higher than the surrounding temperature 
So if the body temperature is about 36 point something degrees, uh, the body, uh, the, the, the outside temperature, the body temperature should be higher, let's say 30, uh, 8.5. Uh, so the body must be really warmed up before, and this takes approximately 15 to 30 minutes. You can do some special preparations to activate the players in that moment. Uh, and this is needed. The higher the level of the player, the more uh, uh, you need to do this warm up work. Uh, for children, uh, it's not needed to have a 30 minutes warm up. Uh, they can have 10 to 15 minutes maximum. But even for them, they should adapt a little bit to the ground. They should warm up the temperature of the blood and then they are ready to run really, really fast. Uh, so this warming up depends on the level of players you have. Uh, but don't do it, uh, as we say, as a cold start. Uh, go into the uh, playground, uh, step onto the ground and immediately start running very fast. Uh, so this is sometimes for the players very hard and a good warming up is uh, uh, just to prevent injuries in that way too, uh, is really needed. Okay, then the technical uh, status is very, very important. If you have um, uh, drills or, uh, uh, yeah, drills with a tactical elements like bouncing the ball and running fast, uh, the players have to be very sure in the bouncing of the ball because the more they need to concentrate and focus the ball and, the, and, and, and uh, concentrate on the technique, the more difficult for them it will be to run very fast. Uh, so that's why the technical movements must be really stabilized in a correct way. Uh, in that moment, they can focus on the maximum speed. If they run without ball, even then, the technique of running is very important. So having a good movement of the, uh, the feet, uh, ankle flexibility, having a good movement with the knees in the right way and not in a, in a wrong way, having a good stability in the hips. These are preconditions that are really needed. So if you have players with certain problems because their feet are maybe in a not normal position, outside, inside, or some other problems, with those feet, uh, they cannot run fast. Uh, it's a problem. Uh, so this is just like you have the wrong tires or uh, old tires on uh, your car and you want to go for a Formula One race. Uh, this is not possible. Uh, so the better the technical preconditions are, the faster they can run. Uh, and this is something uh, a coach should even have an eye on that, uh, see how the players move, see how they run, see how they put the feet on the ground, and from that you can see maybe there is some problem in the ankle, in the knee, in the hip, uh, and give them the advice, maybe see the doctor, change the shoes or something like this, uh, and make it better. Because if there are some problems, and they will train more and more, with a higher load, the problems will not get away. Uh, the problems will get bigger and bigger in that way. So it's a type of, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, um, I'm missing a word, I'm sorry for that. Uh, responsibility, uh, yes, this is the right word. It's a type of responsibility we have for our players uh, to see whether they have the correct preconditions to run very fast. Okay, now if you go for a training and you want to focus on speed and agility, the players should do that at the beginning of the training session because in that moment they are free, they are recovered uh, and not tired from the whole training situation. So. 
after the warming up, as we said before, 15 to maximum 30 minutes, uh, the speech training can be put it into the schedule of the whole training session. Uh. This is something which is quite good on one side. On the other side, we have to accept that in our competition, we don't run only fast, or the players should not only run fast in the beginning of the uh, uh, first half. Uh, so, if they are a little bit tired, then in the competition, they must try to run fast too. Even in the last five minutes of the game, two or three fast breaks, running very fast in that moment, can decide the game. So sometimes we must violate against this rule uh, and put some drills for speed and agility at the end of the training, even when the players are tired, then enforce them to run fast and to run with maximum intensity they can do at that moment now. Second point is that the training load must be calculated exactly from the coach. Yeah? This is something very important because if the players uh, shall go very, very fast, in that moment they need to recover from that load. And normally we say the uh, relation between load and rest is one to six. So, as I said before, we have this 10 seconds maximum duration uh, for maximum speed of the players. Uh, so, in that relation 1 to 6, we can say that after 10 seconds maximum speed, they need 6 times 10 seconds, 1 minute, to really recover and to rest before they can have the next full uh, uh, load uh, action. So, this depends sometimes a little bit on the status of the players. So if you have well-prepared athletes, uh, you can do it like this. If the players are not so well-prepared, maybe they must take a longer rest, let's say one and a half minutes, before the next maximum load can be expected from them. Yeah. So this depends a little bit again on endurance, because endurance is the specific capacity to recreate after a high load or a high intensity run. Uh, so the better the basic endurance is worked uh -huh. out from an uh, from a, uh, athlete, uh, the quicker they can recover and restart with a high load uh, action in speed and agility. So this is something which differs between the different players. Uh, so sometimes it's really a problem uh, to do that correctly for a big group of uh, players in a team. Uh, but in general, sh you should try this. So then in this part where, you, or where the players take rest, they don't need to do nothing. They can do something different. So for instance, if there was a high speed running and the load was uh, in the legs, uh, afterwards for one minute, they can do some easy passing drills with some nice variation of how to give the ball to a partner, uh, do that on an easy way. So it's active break in that moment and they don't work with the legs. So the legs can recover and the arms doing something in a lower load. Then you start the next running and again you take this active break for one minute doing something different. So taking the rest does not mean doing nothing okay and to really go fast a high motivation is needed uh, if the players should achieve the optimum speed this is something very important for speed training because speed training is only useful uh, if we go to let's say 90 95 percent of maximum speed uh, 
if we are, uh, the players will run less than 90% of their maximum speed, this is not speed or high speed training anymore. Uh, so that's why we need to create situations in which they have to run really, really fast. Uh, and if they have the motivation to beat an opponent, uh, to be really quick. Okay, let's come to the second chapter and to the practical demonstration in this presentation. Uh, we have now a chapter about general speed and agility. So you will see a lot of different drills, but very many of them without ball first. Uh, but this is no problem because sometimes we can have variations with the ball too, uh, but still keep in mind that if the technical demands are higher, the level of speed will go down. So the first one is uh, a short sequence you saw yesterday. This is a type of preparation the players need to do. You can integrate this into your warming up program. So this is about different movements like here, working with the ankle in a, in a special way uh, to create the flexibility in the ankle uh, to enforce the players to touch the ground only with the front feet and not with the heel. Uh, and this is in the track and field, I think you call it, we say in Germany, running ABC. Uh, so it's a, a small variation of different types of movements, especially for the legs, uh, which help to work out the technique of running uh, from the players. Because I think it's obvious that if they always touch the ground with the full feet, uh, it will not help them. Different types of jumping are useful too in that moment. You see them here, jumping in a normal way. Now in a different frequency, it's right, right, left, left, uh, left or right knee up in that moment. Uh, so working on the frequency is something very important. Now they jump higher and twist the hips. Uh, arms are going a little bit with them. Uh, and now they go really high, uh, accelerate. Knees up, another variation, very common. Uh, And this is typical warm up the players should do before they go for speed drills. And heels to the back uh, is the same. Uh, so this is also to mobilize the muscles in the legs. Okay. Now the next one we see is a group of three players starting at the coons, uh, you see them here, and accelerate for a certain distance. It's around, let's say, 20 meters. Uh, this is maximum. Uh, it's volleyball court, so it's 18 meters. Uh, so, and running for a longer distance is not needed in handball because this is the maximum uh, uh, distance the players should go to. Uh, these 20 meters, normally the first five meters are the most important. Uh, so acceleration speed here is needed. But first of all, you see they are not starting from standing. They are starting from different movements before, like jumping over the line, forward, backward, or sideward. And now when the coach gives the signal, then they accelerate and start here. So it's a little bit difficult in coordination before, as you see here, they cross the legs and you then the signal is coming Different settings are possible in that moment from the ground, in that push-up uh, position, 
Uh, open and close the legs and then accelerate, bring up the body and go. Do that the other way around so that you have to turn. Uh, sometimes a situation that happens in the game, make a turn and immediately accelerate. And then you can see a little bit the differences in those players. Uh, so easy starting at the beginning, high speed frequency on the spot and then accelerating fast. So it's always good to have the competition between two or maximum three players eh? because they should try to run very fast. Eh? And it's a competition. Because of that competition, the motivation is higher. If you start the players in a single run, eh? they will not go to the maximum. Uh, but if you do this in that way, uh, everyone tries to be the fastest. Uh, and this is the thing we want to have from them, uh, maximum motivation in that moment to go. And they run. So once again, crossing the legs and then speed up. And you go. Very nice. Okay. For the next one, it's two players against each other. It's yellow and black. So normally we say black and white. This is the, the task here or the name of that uh, drill. And you see black is the one to run away. Yellow is the one to touch. Now it's the other way around. Huh? And the, play, the players do that from different starting positions in a different way. Huh? So always the signal is coming from the coach and then the race starts. And some elements of surprise we have in that too. So see it from the beginning. First is easy. Uh, they move all in the same direction. So, but there's a short uh, distance that the player is ahead. So, or the black player is ahead, or now the yellow one. So, and then try to touch this one on the way. Uh, so this is a kind of drill uh, I like very much because it's a question of motivation and you can see whether the players are fighting. Now we have the same with the turnaround situation. Uh, something that happens in the game too. Uh, so it's on one side general, on the other side a little bit specific. Okay, now for the next one, uh, I like it very much. Uh, we have two teams in half court. And the team of yellow is in half court here. It's five or six players, I think. And the six players from black are waiting at the center line. But there is only one single player on the way to catch one single from the black team to catch the one from the yellow team. And to catch, he has 10 seconds time and touch as many of them as possible in that 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, he is out and the next is coming in. Yeah? So this is very nice because we have this 10 seconds maximum load. Yeah? So you see, waiting, now the first is going in, and you can count the time after 10 seconds, this one out, the next one is waiting, 10 seconds over, and now he's coming in. Uh, try to catch as many as possible. Okay, and after 10 seconds, the next one entering the court. Uh, so this is for the black team, a very clear option, a very clear uh, opportunity, to calculate uh, this 10 seconds maximum load 
and with six players in the team, uh, you run one time, then you can rest five times, and then you can do it again. Uh, so almost, almost completely recovered in that moment, you can restart for the second 10 seconds. No. And this is something which you should always keep in mind when using such drills, how to work out that. Okay. Now we're coming to some more uh, game-like uh, uh, variations of that. It's two players together uh, that run uh, while holding their hands and this one team must catch another team. If they catch it, the new team will be the one to catch the others. Uh, so this is something quite funny on one way. Uh, it depends a little bit on coordination and cooperation in that team. Uh, and they can only catch if they hold the hands. Uh, if uh, they open uh, and they don't have contact, uh, it's not possible. They have to communicate how they do this. Uh, and then catch the others. Okay. Now, problem in that moment is that very often you can see that the players go together in groups of two. One very uh, one couple fast players on same level. The other couple more slow. And the slower couple will suffer in that moment uh, very often from the situation that they cannot uh, touch uh, other couples. Uh, so in that situation, sometimes the coach must interrupt and change to another couple uh, that has to catch the, uh, or has to start as a new catching one. Uh, so, but on the other side, this is a so-called endless game uh, because it's continued and continued and continued. Uh, so you can, or let this go for let's say five minutes uh, and every team has to move on the court in that way. Okay, another endless game uh, we see here. This is now two players. But if the one who is running Wait, there is a change of task. Uh, the one who, who was going away is now the one to catch and vice versa. Uh, so this is quite interesting because you have this change of task and this change of movement uh, very quick. Uh, and it's certainly funny in that moment. So this one running, jump over and now going away and you have so many changes of direction change of speed uh, so which is very close to some elements in handball uh, so i like it very much and again it's an endless game uh, because those on the ground they can recover for a long time uh, but the coach has to take care that not always same players are active uh, this is something which is important in that moment. Uh, and if you see the and ask. Okay. Another variation here with a little change of the situation. So you see one player running away, the other tried to catch him. But nine players are standing in a square, three lines, and they hold their arms. So it's like a labyrinth uh, in that moment. And sometimes the coaches give the order to change the position for 90 degrees. Uh, so the situation changes. Uh, and the players very quick have to react on that. So the player can hide, the one who is running away, uh, and must try to find a gap to run through, 
and when the position changes of the players that are focused, uh, then change of direction is needed. Yeah? So, very simple to organize, very nice because a lot of very good for observing and then reacting uh, like we wanted. Okay, now the next one we see here is with a group of players, three at all, they have to catch all the others. If they catch them, if they touch them, those have to stand and open the legs. But those who are free, they can go through the legs of the others. So in that moment, they are free again. Oh, this is the basic idea here. Uh, depends a little bit on the strategy of the players that catch. Uh, so maybe you should first, one side of the court, try to gather those players you have caught, uh, and then one must try to be uh, with them to avoid that they will be free again, uh, whereas the others, they go and hunt the rest. Uh, so, but again, a little bit strategy, a little bit change of direction. Uh, so very nice elements in that uh, to make the players move in a fast way. Okay, now it's a game with dribbling. And in this dribbling game, it's a little bit more complex to explain. The players on the court, they bounce the ball and move with a dribbling using second hand. So it's right-handed player, dribbling with left hand, left-handed player dribbling with right hand. Then the coach shouts out a number. Every player has a number. Then the coach shouts out a number. Now it's four and 14. And those two players, number four and number 14, they can change from second hand to first hand, which enables them to run a little bit faster now. Uh, because bouncing with a strong hand is easier. Uh, and then they should try for a certain period, again, around 10 seconds, to touch all the other players. Uh, so those who are bouncing still with the left hand, they have to observe. Now number seven is active. You can see him in the front. Uh, those who are not uh, uh, active, they can observe and they have to run away. Yeah? Whereas the one with the ball has to, uh, uh, who is the, 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 the name to catch, uh, has to speed up really fast. Now number four and number 14. So, so it depends a little bit on observation and on the technical skills of dribbling with the right and the left hand. Uh, so that's why we cannot expect maximum speed in that moment, but still it's quite okay for the players to move like this. So let's go into uh, another type of drills. You see the players running here, uh, and the coons are the markings uh, they use. So the starting point is always at the yellow coon, Whereas one player, the one here closer in, in front of the video, has the red color and the player on the other side has the blue color. So as you can see, they have to touch coon number four now, which is on the other side. So red is one, two, three here, okay? But four, five, and six on the other side. And for the blue player, it's just the other way around. So one is easy, 
but five is on the other side. So they have to cross two times because they run back to the coon they started. Now in the second step, it's two numbers. It's first number one, second number four on the other side, then cross again and try to touch the yellow one. So in that moment, it's very, very important to bring players together on the same level of speed because then it's a real competition and they run really fast. We can extend this for three numbers huh? and you see how they fight and how they run. Huh? And this is what we want. Huh? So we are in a quick run for less than 10 seconds in that moment. Huh? So it's no problem to speed up very fast. And if in your team you have, let's say, 12 or 14 players, 14 would be perfect because then two players are running and 12 are waiting. 12 players are six groups of two players. So it's one time running and six time resting and then you go again. Okay. Now, finally, you will see another variation in this because they start always at yellow, as you can see but we have the green coons here at the end. Uh, and in this moment, uh, you can have the variation that you allow them to run to the green two, uh, or you give them the advice to run to the green two. Uh, this is possible. Uh, okay, you see how it was working? No problem. See the next. We have the foam bricks and we have red coons on that side, blue coons on that side. Oh, I'm sorry. So in that moment, the player starts to move between the coons, uh, the, the foam bricks. One player is moving, the other player has to follow, to imitate the movement. And while they are on the way, the announcement from the coach is coming, blue or red. Okay, now it was red, and everyone should try to touch the coon first. So it's blue, and imitation, quick steps, very nice, and then red. And again blue, as a surprise, and they have to speed up. So see it from the beginning. Okay. And again, now it's red. Very nice. Okay, the last one of these shows players into squares. Now we have this yellow square, yellow coons here, in the first organization, and we have the orange coons there. The start is easy just to adapt to that. Uh, each player in one square just running as fast as possible, and the way they run is always the same. It's fixed. Touch, 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 and go. So it's four seconds maximum uh, if they run in that way. It's one, two, three, four. Okay, and now the players change. The one who was running in the yellow square is moving to orange square, waiting one time, four seconds rest, when the next is running. I'm sorry for that. Once again, let's start. And now, after the first four seconds from yellow, they go to the waiting position. You see one player already waiting there. So one time running. Now, 
she's coming to the coach one time rest for that girl who is with the coach now and in the next step she has to run again yeah. so it's four seconds running four seconds resting four seconds running and then taking the long rest so this is the first variation just to adapt to the movement inside that square now it's getting more interesting because two players one in each square make an imitation like we saw it before with the foam bricks but now it's not only side words it's side words forwards and backwards uh, so now i see the problem here okay and the players move so yellow is leading orange is following huh? and the most important uh, element here is that always the players have a position face to face this is very important because if not uh, the one who follows cannot see what to do uh, so always now start move and the other one follow so we have different directions forward backward sidewards we have different ways uh, we have even the chance or the players have even the chance to make a feint no problem yeah? and then touch the cone and go away so one more example for this one on one and they go so you see that in this moment coordination is very much required huh? it's not only to run fast but to have a good coordination in that moment too when you make the forward and sidewards and backward moves okay extension here is now make this two times one on one so it's a one on one situation here this one against that one in the back and this one in front against that one right? and the players move like in a man to man situation so it's always same one who is guiding and same one who is following on both sides right? so they don't switch in that moment right? but not only to the other side but to the uh, elements beside of you too because you should not crash into your teammate in your square yeah? so especially when we have a crossing of the running ways yeah, then the players need to organize their movements while running fast and again here 12 seconds maximum uh, the duration should be don't make it too long and start again And this is quite funny for the players and attractive too. Okay, now we change the setting. As you can see, there's a yellow square here in front, but there's another yellow square on the other side. Orange square in front, like before, but another orange square at the back. So now the players start, first of all, easily. And from a certain moment on, the coach changes uh, the tasks. So in the first step, it was yellow to lead and orange to follow. But during they are running, while they are running, the information comes, change. And then it's orange to lead and yellow to follow. <clears throat> so very much, uh, very quick 
they must react on that information from the coach, on that signal. Again, yellow leading. And then information is coming. Now orange leading and yellow is to follow. Uh -huh. So, and especially in that moment, we want the players to react very quick. This is the most important moment. Uh, so running fast in the first and second phase is okay. But to have this very quick change, this is the most important moment. So once again, and then we see the last variation now, which is much more demanding because it's yellow to lead, orange to follow, but then they change to the other direction. Huh? We'll see it afterwards in a slow motion element too, huh? that now they change 90 degrees and they change the task. So once again, yellow leading, orange follow, but now orange in the back here leads and yellow in the front has to follow now come here so change the observation and change the task is now the specific uh, demand in that drill okay so and this leads to our last chapter and to the one slide we have here uh, because I want to give you a short introduction in what will come in our presentation of specific agility. And specific agility we have to define uh, and the definition is that it depends on two components. First of all it's the motor component and the second is the cognitive component. On the motor side, we have coordinative elements and we have conditional elements. So different types of running, jumping, quick hands in defense and so on. Different types of speed and strength are needed to move the body fast. No problem, no question. But for handball players, this is not enough. We need to focus, I'm sorry for that, we need to focus on the cognitive component too, with elements like we see it here on the right side, speed of perception, speed of anticipation, speed of decision-making and reactive speed. And this is what you saw in these drills at the end, when the running was maybe not so fast, but the observation of the opponent, uh, the change of direction, the anticipation, what will happen in the next moment is getting more and more important. And this is something we should always keep in mind uh, if we go for speed training, that the higher the level of the players will be, the more specific we have to do this. So simple elements uh, which only focus on the motor com uh, component simple elements in our training, they will help to increase the speed of the players on that way. But to make them really fast in the competition, uh, we need to focus on specific elements and we need to integrate this cognitive component. Okay, thank you very much for your patience. And now we come back to the presentation mode and I'm looking for the chat. Thank you very much, Mr. Klaus. Mr. Klaus, thank you very much. And my dear my pleasure. fellows, yeah, my dear fellows, in this lesson, Klaus Feldman इस स्पीड और एजिलिटी के बारे में जो डिस्कस 
सकता है कि ये सभी के लिए फ्रूटफुल होगा और यूजफुल होगा और हम इस पे काम करेंगे सो नाउ मिस्टर क्लाउस यू हैव सम क्वेश्चंस सो क्वेश्चन इज दैट हाउ मच रेस्ट शुड बी गिवन टू दी प्लेयर आफ्टर देयर ओन सेशन सो इफ high load on speed and agility one per day is enough it's really enough yeah? so uh, we know that um, or first of all uh, we know from uh, training theory uh, that sometimes we say 48 hours which is two days yeah? but uh, we cannot have a full session 90 minutes or more focusing only on speed yeah? like yesterday in um, in coordination we do this for 20 25 minutes depend on the number of players we have and then we have different topics in our uh, in our training uh, like technical drills like tactics and so on uh. so the load is not as high as in a track and field uh, session uh, in that moment but um, even if we had uh, uh, a high load for a certain time let's say half an hour maximum uh, then we should not repeat the same and you should yes. have five days then change to something different uh. so don't focus too much on that okay next question is how many training session we have to fix in a week for under 19 females and male sorry once again please how many, how many? training session to develop speed and agility in a week this depends on uh, the preconditions you have on the level of the team uh, so this is something uh, which is really uh, not to uh, cannot be answered in general uh, so uh, in germany we have uh, very many teams for younger boys and girls they have two sessions per week in other countries they have even more for sure yeah uh, so if you want to reach a certain uh, level uh, of the players uh, you should have minimum four sessions per week uh, and competition at the weekend okay one more question uh, we have found that what is the right age to develop speed and agility in the male and female what is the right age um okay uh to develop speed and agility we have two uh um uh phases uh, which are very uh, useful the first phase is the same like in coordination yesterday between 6 and 10 uh, in this category of age the players adapt very quick to work out high frequency in their movements uh, so this is something uh, uh, very much uh, uh, useful the second is in second phase of puberty when the players are um, getting a little bit more powerful uh, because in that moment with that power they can accelerate uh, the body in a very nice way so in these two uh, phases of the uh, of the human development speed can be developed in a very good way do you have some specific uh speed and agility test specific test for speed and agility no i don't have and to be honest i don't think that we need this uh, so um i said it yesterday coordination we cannot train okay okay endurance and power we can train but speed we uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, coordination we cannot test sorry for for mistake and uh, endurance and power we can have test no problem and from this test we are going to give individual tasks to the player so if i see for instance in uh, uh, 
weightlifting or something, uh, one player not very strong, let's say 50 kilos maximum, uh, and I want to improve his level. Then I say, okay, you go for 40 kilos, I give you the number of repetitions, I give you the number of sets. Then from this test, I have a good advice uh, how to train. If the other one is pushing 120 kilos uh, from the test, I know, and then I give him different advice. This is the, the result or the effect of the test mm -hmm. that I know the maximum power, and from that maximum power, I can give advices how to train. In endurance, it's the same. If I see that someone can run 50 minutes on a row uh, in a, uh, a quicker speed uh, compared to another, uh, then I need to give different advices for this player how to get better in endurance or for the weaker one. In speed, it's not, not useless, uh, this is not the right word, but it's difficult to develop this. Uh, and in speed, uh, I think more depends on that specific uh, speed we have in the game. Because so many reactions are needed depending on so many signals. Uh, they depend on experience, they depend on the situation. Uh, and sometimes a player who is not so fast on the motor uh, 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 level, uh, on, in the motor component, he still can be faster than the others because of running earlier, making a better decision. This is what we see in the presentation about the special uh, um, concept of agility. Okay, uh, one more question, uh, Mr. Klaus, that after a session of speed and uh, agility development, can these players should be taken uh, to the weight training hall or not? For weight training. Yes, they can, but you have to see how tired they are. Uh, so it, it, is, all, it always depends on how tired they are. Because if they are tired, uh, the level of coordination goes down, the level of technical elements sometimes goes down. Yes. Okay. Okay. One thing you told that uh, overload. How we can calculate the training load before we start to develop this agility and speed? Mm, by the time they they start to run slower, uh, then we will see that we are in an overload situation. Uh, so this is really depending on the experience of the coach. Uh, um, you can do that in track and field. They do that with measuring. Uh, but in our handball teams, uh, with those different types of players, we cannot measure everyone. Okay, when you are, uh, when uh, one question more than when you are uh, going to develop speed or agility, after one repetition, there will be a complete recovery or incomplete recovery? Uh, you, it depends on if you have, um, like we saw this in the uh, uh, square of the, of the coons, yeah? if you have a first load or uh, uh, activity phase of four seconds only, then four seconds recovery is okay, and another four seconds load is okay, and you have eight seconds uh, load with four seconds recovery in between, and then after this you go to full recovery. Huh? So it's, uh, the full recovery is only needed after full load for 10 or maximum 12 seconds. Thank you. Uh, huh. yeah. yeah, one more question from... Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear Mr. C.P. Singh? Oh, no. No. No, Edra. Yeah. Edra, yeah. Yeah, one last question, I think, from my colleague, Mr. C.P. Singh. So, yeah. having uh, yeah, somebody... Hello, Mr. Cruz. Good you... morning. Good morning. Can Good morning. Me? Yes, now it's better. Uh, uh, Isaac Houston from Dr. Salius. He yeah. wants to know what are the key factors of agility training apart from technical aspect, especially for handball players. Sorry, 
once again, please. I repeat. What are the key factors of agility training apart from technical aspect, especially for handball players? The key uh, uh, effects are. Key factors of agility. Training. Key factors of agility training apart uh, from technical aspect for handball. Can you, can you please type it into the chat? Uh, she be typed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Klaus. Uh, good morning. Hi. Can you hear me? A little bit better, yes, because you have the microphone in your mouth. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, it's a nice presentation. Uh, I want to just uh, add it um, for the agility training. Uh, yeah. Like in your exercises, sometimes the path was fixed and sometimes uh, it was unfixed. But unfixed is much more better. Yes, yes, for sure. Because in a game, we have to uh, move not in that fixed way. Yeah. So fixed is more precondition and fixed is more game-like, I would say. Okay. Very nice. Because these days, it is uh, unfixed, more of the unfixed uh, for getting much better results. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. Okay, question is coming. Key factors of agility training apart from technical aspects, especially for, oof, okay. First of all, it's coordination. Uh, it's very much needed. Uh, second is the technique, uh, especially in the legs. Uh, so a good running technique uh, with good work of the ankle, uh, good uh, conception of the knees and the hips. Uh, this is very, very important. Uh, uh, if you have players with problems in the knees, uh, for instance, some players, they have this O or some uh, female, very often, they have X uh, uh, conception in their, in their legs. Uh, so this is not useful for running very fast. Uh, so ankle, knee and hips, they must be in a good way. And you need a little bit strength of the body uh, to keep the body upright. And you know, all those elements from track and field, uh, they are really uh, important as preconditions. So as we said, this is the technical part. Then we have the coordination part. Uh, and then from my point of view, most important is in handball, the observation and reaction. Uh, because we have so many signals in our game. Uh, and so many different reactions depending on that, that this is something which is much more important uh, than maximum speed. So if one player can run very fast, it's always fine, but this is not enough because it's not useful to run with 100 kilometers per hour, but in the wrong direction. Uh, Sorry, this was a joke a little bit, but you know what I mean, hopefully, uh, uh, that players, sometimes they are so fast, uh, but they are bad in decision-making. Okay, no sound at the moment. So, can you hear me now? Now, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the last. This is the last question. Can we train yeah. speed? Uh, can we train speed as agility, uh, speed and agility in same training session? If yes, then yes. how to differentiate specific exercises between speed and agility? Because both components have different nature. Yes, I think we can. Uh, this is not the problem. Uh, so, uh, this is something which is. I think for especially handball players, something very much needed 
that we have variation of training content uh, and not focus too long and too much on something which is for them a little bit boring. Uh, so they need this variation. Do it in a game-like situation, do it in a drill, change back to something else. And I think that especially the variation of the drills and the variation of the content is something which is closer to our game situations. So that's why the players need it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Klaus. Okay. Yeah, thank the, you very much. Very good and informative uh, lesson for us. So the PDF will come in the afternoon. Okay, boss. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We will enhance the and we will implement the athletes. So thank you very much, one and all.